A lot of people are looking forward to They Shall Not Pass. The new French Army DLC is promising to be a DLC filled with variety and something which will refresh a game which hasn't had a lot of content just yet. This first DLC is going to be massive, I believe, in the overall constructs of Battlefield 1. And today, after playing the final version of They Shall Not Pass at an event in Stockholm, I felt it was worth counting down the top 5 things you have to look forward to in the DLC. For me at 5, it's most certainly the new setting and the new French army. It's really cool to have a kind of thematic DLC return to Battlefield in general. The franchise always had like a tendency to try and theme DLCs so that certain people would enjoy them. For example, Naval Strike in Battlefield 4, Vietnam in Bad Company 2, or something like Close Quarters in Battlefield 3. And we're kind of getting the return to this now. Battlefield 1 is featuring the French army in lots of different French battles, and it comes together very nicely in lots of different subtle ways, like sometimes just seeing a new heavy tank on the field, or the blue uniforms, some of the new weapons and the new settings. It ties in all together to give a very fresh feel to the game, and I feel as though a lot of people are going to appreciate this when they jump in and play the DLC for the first time, because playing as the French army almost feels as though you're getting an entirely different section of the war to play in. One of my favourite things from playing the DLC was actually just some of the war cries on the operations as the French ran forward attacking their enemies. It was really awesome to hear and just having that kind of new shimmer and new glaze over things I think is going to do a world of good. Up at 4 for me is certainly going to be weapon variety. All of the new weapons in the DLC feel fantastic, and for the first time I can safely say nearly every gun I used felt as though it had its own unique strengths and weaknesses, and that I felt as though I could play with them in individual ways that would benefit me. The RSC rifle, for example, can do incredibly high damage at close ranges for the medic, and it will probably be a fan favourite of mine. And the Ruby Rolls, traditionally even though I'm not much of an assault player, is perhaps one of the first assault weapons to make me perhaps use the class again. It's got a bipod, it's got a good magazine, and if you can control it well, you can get some pretty good kills. The same applies to the Sure Shot as well, and every one of the four DLC weapons. They've got their own kinks, they've got their own perks, and I'm sure if you use them in lots of different varieties, you're going to have a good time. You will be finding yourself on an operation where all of a sudden you're on Verdun Heights, and you're fighting across long bowels of terrain and lots of stretches of open fields, and suddenly you're transitioned onto the next map, which is of course Fort Vaux, and then things get close quarters and you have to pull out an SMG. The DLC works very hand in hand with the weapons and there's extra depth and lots of stuff I feel as though you guys are going to enjoy. Number three for me is the vehicular focus, and there are two maps in particular and one operation which are very much catered towards vehicles. Soissons and Rupture are almost entirely dedicated to vehicular warfare. Soissons in particular is dedicated to the largest ever tank battle that took place in World War I, and in certain layouts, which includes things like Conquest, there can be up to six tanks on the field on one individual team, so a grand total of potentially 12 vehicles on the map, which is insane. On the same focus, Rupture is also a very much aeroplane based map. There's lots of different types of aircraft that you can use including the bomber, the attack plane, the fighter plane. But what makes this map so interesting is that the very condensed down space makes an airplane and air superiority incredibly massive for those who want to turn the tide. Now I think this is pretty great having the option to play an entire operation, which is by the way beyond the Marne, which will almost entirely dedicate you to vehicular warfare is pretty cool. I like the option to be able to do that and go into an operation which is tuned in a certain direction. I don't really have to have a certain mix up of infantry and tank gameplay. I could go for an operation which is nearly entirely tank warfare. And I feel as though that's going to be something a lot of you guys out there who enjoy your vehicles are going to enjoy. Personally speaking, I'm more of an infantry man, but I know this is something you guys are going to be up for. Now, second one is, of course, infantry-focused gameplay. And I said I was a bit more of an infantry man, so you can see why this is perhaps second instead of third. Now, as applied with the vehicles, there is also an infantry focus on the DLC. It's almost been split half and half. So Soissons and Rapture and Beyond the Mant, which is the operation, is dedicated to vehicles, whereas Devil's Anvil, which is the operation for infantry, Fort Vaux and Verdun Heights, which are the two maps of it, have been entirely dedicated to infantry-based warfare. And... The actual operation, Devil's Anvil, is the first operation to feature infantry only. You will not come across any vehicles except for potentially a transport vehicle in this
this game mode. There's also no behemoths in either of these maps as well. The behemoths are actually the elite classes. So if you find yourself down by a large number of tickets, you will not only have the trench raider spawn in your base, but you'll also have a sentry kit and a flame trooper spawn in your base as well. So you can have three different elite classes on the field trying to turn the tide in these maps. It's really awesome, and I think it works effectively very much so in front lines, which is something we're going to discuss as well. I just feel as though infantry-based gameplay and having the option to choose an entire operation and two entire maps which feature no vehicles is massive, especially for somebody like me who loves one-on-one -on -one situations and group battles and using weaponry as opposed to vehicles. So a bit of something for everyone. I'm sure variety is probably the best word to describe the list you're hearing here today. The final thing is of course Frontlines. This is the brand new game mode and it does have some kinks I'll be honest. There were a few things at the event which were a bit off-putting but overall Frontlines gives me the intensity of Operations which is massive. Operations is a very fast paced and intense mode and Frontlines although it has 32 players gives me that same intensity. You guys are going to be battling back and forth between flags and objectives and MCOMs and it can get really tense and it can take just a single player to turn the tide in their favour and we had some games during this event where we were losing by one MCOM, they had captured all three flags, we held them off for a while, and then we ended up winning the entire game by pushing them all the way back. It's huge, it's massive, and you guys are probably going to have the most fun with Frontlines in my opinion, which is going to probably be a standout mode of Battlefield 1, and I really do hope they continue supporting it in future DLCs. So that's about it for me today, the Tactical Brit. If you guys enjoyed this list, please give me a thumbs up and please let me know in the comment section below what exactly it is that you guys are looking forward to in the They Shall Not Pass DLC. Feel free to ask your questions as well on Twitter or in the comment section and I'll do my best to keep in touch with you. As always guys, thank you for watching and I'll catch you again in another video.